Return for a moment to 1970 and 1971, from the premiere of Monday Night Football and All in the Family, to the dawn of the jumbo jet era and the first orbit of Mars. Let's revisit the highlights of your graduation in the early 70s. The first New York City Marathon is a small event attracting 127 runners. A 30-year-old New York City fireman is the first to cross the finish line, applauded by about 100 spectators. Today, more than 50,000 runners compete in the annual marathon, and approximately 3 million spectators cheer them on. In 1970, the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Minnesota Vikings 23-7. In 1971, the Baltimore Colts beat the Dallas Cowboys 16-13 in Super Bowl V. It's the first Super Bowl on artificial turf, and the first following the merger of the AFL and NFL. The NASDAQ Stock Exchange launches with 50 companies. All trading is conducted by a network of computers, making it the world's first fully electronic stock market. An estimated 20 million Americans participate in the first Earth Day on April 22, 1970, launching the modern environmental movement. That December, President Nixon signs an executive order establishing the EPA. The new agency's mission? Ensuring that all citizens have clean air, water, and land. The Apollo 13 moon mission is forever defined by one famous line, Houston, we have a problem. After an oxygen tank explodes and other systems begin to fail, NASA brings the crew safely back to Earth on April 17, 1970, six days after launch. The following year, NASA continues its space exploration, with Apollo 14 ending a nine-day expedition with a tee-off as astronaut Alan Shepard sends two golf balls soaring across the lunar surface. A few months later, Mariner 9, the first spacecraft to enter another planet's orbit, circles Mars for 349 days, transmitting more than 7,000 images of the red planet's surface. In 1970, the average cost of a new house is less than $24,000. By 1971, the average cost has increased to $25,250. The median annual income is between $9,800 and $10,600. Gas costs rise to 40 cents a gallon, and you can mail a letter for less than a dime. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty goes into effect after it's ratified by 43 countries. More than 200 nations eventually signed the treaty, which has seen many challenges and disarmament disputes in the 50 years since ratification. TV highlights from the early 1970s include premieres of The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Monday Night Football on ABC, All in the Family, and The Jackson Five. In 1970, President Richard Nixon signs legislation banning cigarette ads on television and radio. The law takes effect one year later, and the last cigarette ad in the U.S. airs during The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson on January 1, 1971. Four students are killed and nine wounded by Ohio National Guardsmen on May 4, 1970 at Kent State University during a protest against the U.S. bombing of Cambodia. The same week, about 200 UMR students and faculty members protested and sought to have the flag in front of the library lowered to half-staff as a sign of mourning for the dead in Indochina and at Kent State. In 1971, the voting age in the U.S. is lowered from 21 to 18 after the 26th Amendment is ratified. The 70s launched many revolutionary products, starting with the Nerf Ball, the Computer Mouse, Kevlar, and Kansas City-based rival manufacturing introduces the Crock-Pot. Moviegoers load up on popcorn to enjoy M.A.S.H., Patton, Five Easy Pieces, the French Connection, Fiddler on the Roof, and Dirty Harry. NPR's news program, All Things Considered, debuts in May. The first broadcast is archived today in the Library of Congress.
Paul McCartney announces in April 1970 that the Beatles have disbanded, and the group's final album, Let It Be, is released in May. The following year, John Lennon's solo album, Imagine, is released. Billboard's top singles include songs by Simon and Garfunkel, The Carpenters, Three Dog Night, Rod Stewart, and many more. A Yale graduate named Fred Smith founds Federal Express in Little Rock, Arkansas, when he buys controlling interest in Arkansas aviation sales and proceeds to revolutionize overnight shipping. Company headquarters moved to Memphis two years later. A Boeing 747 operated by Pan Am makes history in January with the Jumbo Jet's first commercial flight, carrying 332 passengers from New York to London. Now that we've revisited some milestones of 1970 and 1971, let's look back at campus life 50 years ago. In 1970, Merle Baker enters his sixth year as chancellor, and the university prepares to launch a year-long centennial celebration. Over the last six years, the number of full-time faculty increases by more than 60 percent, from 243 to 389. In the fall of 1970, the College of Arts and Sciences was organized combining the School of Science and the Division of Liberal Arts. The Air Force ROTC program was first established on the UMR campus in 1971, but was deactivated in 1976 after the campus experienced a drop in enrollment. The program returned to campus in August of 1981 and remains active today. One of the year's biggest weekends brings female students to campus by the busload for the all-school mixer. The celebration of 100 years of campus history continues on Centennial Weekend. Highlights include the endurance chug, couples inner tube race, a mustache and beard contest, music from the happenings and the Rotary Connection, and Susan Goodwin is crowned Centennial Queen. The newly formed Association for Black Students and the Student Union Board hosted Black Emphasis Week on campus. The week's events included a speech from Fayetteville, Mississippi Mayor Charles Evers, a performance by the Preservation Hall Jazz Band, and a modern black drama and poetry presentation from the Black Artist Group. Homecoming brings another excuse to close your books. The Miners meet Southeast Missouri State on the football field, and Betsy Thompson is crowned homecoming queen. The following year, the Miners tie with Southwest Missouri State, spoiling UMR's chance to win its first homecoming game in four years. Marianne Folk was crowned homecoming queen at the halftime ceremonies. The Student Council sponsors performances by the Brooklyn Bridge, Friends of Distinction, the Albans, Los Indios Tabajaras, and Earthlight. University Day brings prospective students and their parents to campus for tours, special exhibitions, and demonstrations of minor ingenuity. Parents' Day has everyone on best behavior as moms and dads tour campus, meet Chancellor Baker and faculty members, and enjoy a lunch buffet. Classes are canceled on February 24th as the campus kicks off the university's centennial celebration on Founders Day. John O'Keefe, Assistant Chief of Planetary Studies for NASA, delivers the keynote address. Friday, October 23, 1971, the St. Pat's Board presented the university with a statue of St. Patrick. The statue was placed in the Wilson Library, where it resided for 37 years. In August of 2008, the statue was cast in bronze and relocated outside on the corner of Toomey Hall. Rolla gets rowdy in March as miners honor the patron saint of engineers. St. Pat and his court preside over the festivities and everyone gets their parade on. 
Togas and chariot races make a comeback as fraternities celebrate Greek Week with the traditional carnival at Lions Club Park and the Greek Games, where a new contest, the keg throw, redefines the Greek athletic ideal. On the intramural front, the Engineers Club wins the overall championship. The following year, Kappa Sigma takes the top honor. Female students compete for the first time in intramural basketball, volleyball, swimming, and track. From the scrimmage line to center court to home plate, students compete in Division II athletics in the Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Miners have their first winning football season in many years. Swimming returns after the demolition of Jackling Gym leaves the team without a home pool until the completion of the Gail Bullman Multipurpose Building. Longtime athletic director and beloved coach Gail Bullman retires after 24 seasons with minor athletics. The Rolamo expands its staff and adds pages to commemorate the university centennial, and KMSM increases airtime, including live broadcasts from varsity athletic events. The Missouri Miner sells enough advertising to retire a budget deficit and is named number one Missouri college newspaper in Class B competition. Your hard work culminates on graduation day, with Missouri Senator Thomas Eagleton delivering the commencement address. The university confers 893 bachelor's degrees, 301 master's degrees, and 49 doctorates. Proud families and friends fill the arena as Dr. C. Bryce Ratchford, interim president of the University of Missouri, conferred 947 bachelor's degrees, 466 masters, and 43 doctorates. Congratulations to our golden alumni on the 50th anniversary of your graduation. May you keep making memories for many years to come.